Hello dear students and a very good morning to all of you. Welcome back to the video lectures for social science for class 8. Here I am going to provide you the third part of the chapter number 11 of history that is Indian National Movement and Independence. Students, this chapter is bit lengthy but a very interesting chapter. Okay, I have already provided you two parts. Please watch those parts and then only come to the part third. Then you will be able to understood. Okay, as in the previous parts, we have already covered the time period from 1870 till 1906. Okay, so in this part, we will learn about the major events of the Indian National Movement that took place between 1907 till 1915 okay but before coming to the new topics let us revise what we have learned in the previous video or in the previous part okay so we have learned about we have seen rise of national so firstly we have learned about the rise of nationalism in indians okay and that period was from 1850 to 1870 we have seen that indians have started feeling okay patriotism and they started developing this feeling that India is their nation and it is only for Indians, okay? So, Britishers should be thrown out from India. The next one we have seen that the rise of nationalism also gave birth to the formation of various political organizations or associations in India, okay? After that, we have learned this thing that Britishers introduced three major acts in India, okay, to restrict the nationalist movement going on in India. That is the Arms Act of 1878, the Vernacular Press Act of 1878 as well as the Ilbert Bill Controversy in 1883. Okay, we have also learned this thing that Albert Bill controversy was major reason was a for, for the formation of the Indian National Congress. After that, we have learned about the famine of 1873 when there was acute shortage of food and uh, the people of India were facing all the major regions like Bengal and all that regions were facing famine at that time. People were having shortage of food and they were facing poverty. Okay, after that, one act came into existence that is 18 in 1878. Britishers reduce, reduces the age of limit of Indian civil services examination from 21 to 19, okay. Uh, all these things or all these acts or whatever was going on, Britishers were doing, all this affected the Indians and there was the formation of a national party that stood for whole nation. That party was the Indian National Congress and the Indian National Congress formed in 20, on 20th December 1885, okay. All of you are knowing that AOU and WC Benerjee's, okay. So, this I have already explained, please watch the previous videos. We have seen that in Indian National Congress, there were two types of leaders. The first was the moderate leaders and the other was the extremist leaders. We have seen that in the early years, okay, the Indian National Congress was governed by or ruled by the moderate leaders only from 1885 till 1905. Okay, we have also learned about the partition of Bengal. Partition of Bengal, the rumor is spread that Bengal is going to be partitioned on in 1903, the rumor have spread. After that, Lord Curzon partitioned Bengal on 60th October 1905. Okay. After that, after the partition of Bengal, in the opposition of the partition of Bengal, we have learned about that people of India have started, or we can say that the extremist group of the Indian National Congress has started, the Swadeshi and boycott movement. Okay. In that, they have started boycotting the foreign-made goods, foreign, uh, the universities, colleges that were established by the Britishers. Okay. This movement was started after the announcement, okay, of the date of the partition of Bengal, okay. But after that also, uh, Lord Curzon divided Bengal or partitioned Bengal into East Bengal and West Bengal between Muslims and Hindus, okay. Uh, with the Swadeshi and boycott movements, is since this movement was getting popularity, mass, mass people, in mass people were collecting together and opposing the foreign goods as well as they were promoting the Swadeshi goods, that means the goods that were made in India. Okay, so that is only uh, after that British uh, partition this reappeal. That means partition repeal Gardia. It means that they said that after that they again joined Bengal in 1911. So about all this we have already learned in the previous part. Let us see that what we are going to learn in this part. In this part we will learn about the Surat split. It is also known as Congress split in 1907. Then we will learn about formation of Muslim League in 1906. We will see Muslim into reform and rise of revolutionaries revolutionaries i will also explain you that and then we will learn about the gadha party okay so let us move further and learn about this thing that what was congress split in 1907 so students as we have learned till now that extremists and moderates there were two groups in the indian national congress and both these groups were having their own ideologies and methods okay moderates adopted methods such as speech prayer petitions and public meetings while extremists adopted the methods that were radical in nature, okay, they have adopted boycotting or strike, all these things they have adopted, okay. Moderates believed in the fair policies of Britishers, moderates felt that if they were, will put forward their demands in front of the Britishers, okay, Britishers will understand it and they will listen to the demands of Indians. While extremists believe that Britishers should be pressurized, okay, then only they will listen the demands of Indians. 
and after the partition of bengal i have also explained you that when lord curzon was going to partition bengal at that time only moderates were started writing uh, letters or started doing petitions public meetings regarding or through that only they were opposing the partition of bengal but after that also lord curzon divided bengal into two parts okay so that only since more britishers were not listening about moderate and extremists were telling that if britishers are not listening to the moderate okay then they have to adopt various other methods and that's why they have started the swadeshi and boycott movement that believes in strike and boycotting the foreign goods okay so all this created difference between the moderate and extremist and that only result in the congress split that means in 1907 in the surat session when the session or the congress session was going on in surat at the time only moderates and extremists became okay they became away from each other that means they split okay their methodologies were different and they started working separately so let us learn about the congress split more it took place in 1907 okay so first of all i want to explain you the background we will learn about the two major sessions the one session of 1905 that took place in varanasi and the other session was other session of congress was calcutta session that took place in calcutta okay in 1906 and 1905 so let us learn about the congress session of 1905 okay since in 1905 the swadeshi and boycott movement was going on okay this movement was started by the extremists as i have explained you okay in this varanasi session gopal krishna gokhale gopal krishna gokhale was a moderate leader when the session of varanasi took place okay since the swadeshi and boycott movement was started by the extremist leaders okay the gopal krishna gokhale said that he announced that they are supporting the swadeshi and boycott movement that means they accepted this thing that yes they are supporting the boycott and swadeshi movement but after that when the session took place in 1906 okay at the time both of them started fighting okay because they wanted to continue the swadeshi extremist wanted to continue the swadeshi movement and that can only be possible wo tabhi possible ho sakta tha when they choose or the president of indian national congress will be extremist because moderate leaders are no more in favor of favoring the swadeshi and boycott movement okay so in uh, since moderate wanted that uh, their from their group someone became the president of uh, calcutta session and extremists wanted that from their group someone became the session of uh, president of calcutta session but after that also dada bhai naroji since extremists and moderates both respect respected dada bhai naroji that is why dada bhai naroji became the leader or became the president okay but in calcutta session the extremist leader demanded that inc should apply the passive resistance that means when the meeting or session was going on at that time only the extremist leader told that we have to adopt the passive resistance okay now no more those moderate methods will not work for the britishers since britishers are partitioning they have already partitioned bengal we have to oppose it by passive resistance only and that passive re resistance what were the methods that extremist wanted to adopt that is boycott british universities school colleges jobs and army they wanted to boycott foreign goods salt as well as clothes they boycott even they also wanted to boycott the british laws and taxes and in the calcutta session moderates were not ready to listen to the extremists they do not want all these things to done okay they wanted to stop the swadeshi and boycott movement and they wanted constitutional reform okay wo chahte the ki britishers se baat karke mamla suljha le but extremists believe that no aisa kuch bhi nahi ho sakta since the differences had started cropping between both of them between moderate and extremists from 1905 only okay let us see what happened later In 1907, in the Surat session, okay, that su session was planned to be held in Na Pune, okay. Since Pune was facing plague at that time, okay, at that time only Pune was facing. No, the thing was that uh, the extremist wanted Lokman Tilak or Lala Lajpat Rai to become the president of the session. Again, this thing only happened in 1907 session also. extremist wanted to continue the swadeshi and boycott movement okay they wanted passive resistance they wanted to strike or boycott british goods and all those things so they wanted that if the leader of the inc or the president of the inc will be extremist then only we can continue this okay so that is why extremist wanted lokmanya tilak or lala lajpat rai they were extremist leaders to become the president okay but moderate wanted want rash bihari ghos to become the president okay since lokmanya tilak belongs to pune only lokmanya tilak belongs to pune only that is why ultimately means suddenly 
the moderate changed the venue of the session and they took the session to surat that means suddenly they announced that that now the session of indian national congress will be held in surat okay earlier it was planned to be held in pune okay but after that moderates changed the venue and it became surat so that lokmanya tilak could not go there okay now after that at last moderates changed the venue of the session from pune to surat and he is ras bihari both ras bihari goes became the president since the majority of moderates was more all of you are knowing that earlier also i have explained you the what the people or the group of leaders those who were having moderate belief they were more in number in comparison to the extremists and as i have explained you the president of indian national congress was chosen by election so it is quite possible since the number of moderates were more that is why moderates only will become the president so again due to voting or with the voting only rash bihari goes won in majority and he only became the president of that indian national congress this infuriated this infuriated the extremists okay this infuriated the extremists and a split took place between the moderates and the extremists okay this infuriated the extremists and both of them set apart from each other the group of extremists was led by bal gangadhar tilak and they have their own programs they have they just separated they were they were the member of indian national congress but they said that now we are not going to listen to the moderates and we will do or we will take our steps separately so in the leadership of bal gangadhar tilak okay extremists decided their own programs that how they are going to handle it both the groups remained apart for next 9 years and for the next 9 years both moderates and extremists remain apart from each other we will learn about lucknow pact okay that i will explain you in the next video we will learn about lucknow pact and after 9 years in 1916 okay they will again combine with each other so that we will learn later but this is all about surat split okay surat split is known as congress split when the two groups of the congress that is moderates and the extremists set apart from each other because they they the differences started cropping between them due to their methods and ideologies okay let us move further and learn about rise of communalism now what is communalism communalism means like hindu muslim okay communities so differences between the communities that is only known as the communalism in india communalism with the rise of nationalism the rise of com communalism also took place that means we have learned about this thing that indian national congress humne padha we have learned about this also that when when swadeshi and boycott movement was going on at the time only only hindu festivals were promoted and melas were promoted okay muslim festivals were not promoted that is the reason that muslims were we can say that they were not happy with this thing of hindu the muslims and hindus had lived, had lived together in india from a very for centuries since from the mughals only hindu and muslims are living happily in india the uprising of 1857 made the british realize that in order to, con to control their rule in india or to continue their rule in india they must divide the two communities okay britishers since britishers saw in the revolt of 1857 then how muslims and hindus combined together and rose against the britishers we have seen that hindus made bahadur shah zafar the leader of the revolt of 1857 so britishers were knowing that if they wanted to continue to rule in india they have to separate these two communities that is hindu and muslim okay thus they sowed the seed of dissension they sowed the seed of dissension dissension means differences between the hindus and muslim they wanted okay they keep on rumoring they keep on rumoring hindus and muslims opposing to each other it was the policy of divide and rule they decided that once we have already seen that when they have partitioned bengal they already partitioned us on the basis of religion that is hindu and muslim okay that led to the formation of muslim league okay muslim league that means the like we were having indian national congress okay this is the political party that was for the whole nation but muslim league was formed just only for the hindu muslims and they wanted okay if this league was formed for the muslims okay the british justified the partition as we have already learned this thing the britishers justified the partition of bengal by convincing the muslims okay after the partition of bengal into east bengal and west bengal the britishers started convincing the muslims that we have partitioned bengal just because to create a new muslim majority province we wanted a muslim majority province we wanted you to give a separate province that is why we have divided okay bengal so uh, muslims also started convincing okay with the britishers and with that only they have decided okay to form an organization that will work for the muslims only okay that will work for the for promoting or for safeguarding the interest of muslims only 
In the formation of the Muslim League, the main person who played an important role was Sir Syed Ahmed Khan. Let us learn about Sir Syed Ahmed Khan. Okay, Sir Syed Ahmed Khan was a great educationist and social reformer. He was a social reformer. He regarded that Hindus and the Muslims to be one qom or nation. He only told that that Hindus and Muslims are together. Okay. Okay. Now later on, he founded the Aligarh Muslim University was founded by him only. He founded Mohammedan Anglo Oriental College at Aligarh. Mohammedan Anglo Oriental College that means the college that also teaches Ang English languages or British languages as well as Asian languages. Okay. In 1880s, he gave up his earlier view, but he convinced with the Britishers and he gave up his earlier view. That means he changed his view regarding Hindu and Muslim and declared that and he declared that. Political interest of Hindus and Muslims are different. He only declared he believed in the togetherness of Hindus and Muslims. But after convincing with the Britishers, he only told that he changed his views and he told that for, for political interest, Hindus and Muslims are different from each other. He also opposed the formation of Indian National Congress. Sir Syed Ahmed Khan said that Indian National Congress is an organization that only works for the Hindus. This organization only works for the Hindus, and that is why he opposed the Indian National Congress. It was said that he believed that since the Hindus form the majority of Indian population, they would dominate the Muslims after the British. It was their belief since Muslims were less in number, they were in minority, so Muslims were having inferiority. Okay, they believed that once the Britishers will be thrown out from India, then since Hindus are in great population, they will start dominating Muslims also. They will start ruling. That is why they started promoting. Okay, they started promoting. Or they started convinced with the Britishers that they want separate nation. Okay, so from this time only, the Britishers sowed the seed that we saw the result of that seed, the plant, the crop that we have seen, the partition of India into two nations of Hindu and Muslim communities. Okay, so this was only the rise of communalism. India started dividing on the basis of religion, that is Hinduism and Islam. Okay. Next is, does he declare that if educated Muslims support Britishers, he only said that we have to support Britishers. The educated Muslims should support the Britishers. They could grant them with the government jobs and special favors. Okay, he said that if we will support the Britishers, they will definitely give us special favors. Okay, and job grants. Okay. Let us move further, and we will learn about the formation of Muslim League in 1906. Okay, Sir Syed Ahmed Khan played an important role in the formation of Muslim League by sowing the seeds of Muslim communalism. That means Muslim is a different community, and they have to work for their betterment. Okay, otherwise Hindus will start dominating them. In 1906, a group of Muslim landlords, Muslim landlords, the rich landlords, and the Nawabs, the rulers. Okay. Formed the All India Muslim League at Dhaka. Dhaka is now the capital of Bangladesh, and here only All India Muslim League was formed under the leadership of Aga Khan. Okay, Aga Khan was the leader, and under him only this organization was formed. Okay, the first president of this session was first session which was held in 1906. The president of the first session was Nawab of Dhaka, Khwaja Salimullah. Okay, Khwaja Salimullah was the Nawab of Dhaka at that time. And he was only the president of the first session, but the permanent pre president was Sir Sultan Muhammad Shah, also known as Aga Khan III. Okay, he was the permanent president, and Sir Sultan Muhammad Shah, that is only the Aga Khan. Okay, so like this only, the formation of Muslim or All India Muslim League took place in 1906. This organization was formed at Dhaka. Okay, under the leadership of Sir Syed Ahmed Khan and Aga Khan. So let us move further. These are the famous leaders or of the Indian, or, sorry, of the Muslim League. Okay, uh, in these pictures, Khwaja Salimullah Khan is there. Okay, Vikar Ul Mulk is there. Okay, Syed Amir Ali is there, and Khan Bahadur Gulam is there. So they are the famous or they are the founders of the Muslim League or the famous leaders of the Muslim League. Okay, let us move further. What was the objective of Muslim League? Why this organization was formed? The association was formed. This association was formed basically to. Safeguard the Muslim communities by supporting Britishers. Their rule, their belief was that they have to safeguard the interests of the Muslims, and for that purpose, they have to support the Britishers to keep the Muslim masses away from the Indian National Congress. They wanted, okay, to be to separate from the Indian National Congress. Okay, Muslims should be set away from the Indian National Congress. That is why they formed the Muslim League. That is why they formed the Muslim League so the Muslims can become the member of Muslim League, and Indian National Congress is for Hindus. To make a demand of separate electorate for Muslims, I will explain you this thing that what is separate electorate. Okay, there is one more demand for the of the of the Muslims with the Britishers that they wanted separate electorate. Okay, let us move further and learn about the Morley Minto reform. It is also known as the Indian Council Act 1909. 
students in the second part i have already explained you about two major indian council act the one was of 1861 we have learned about 1861 indian council act we have also learned about 1892 okay these two council act we have already learned here we are going to learn about the indian council act of 1909 which was also known as morley minto reform okay this act was also known as morley minto reform so students as we have learned about this thing that the formation of all india muslim league took place okay in 1906 since muslims demanded they have several demands so britishers since britishers were only promoting muslims for the formation of a separate organization that is why now Mus britishers has to listen to the demand of the muslims so that is why this council act came into existence that made some changes in the administration of india okay the britishers took the advantage of congress split congress was al already split okay and separate organization that means indians were also divided on the basis of religion so that is why they announced the indian council act of 1909 which is popularly known as morley minto reform let us move further now learn about sir john morley okay morley minto they are two different person one is morley and the other is minto so who is morley morley born in 24 december 1838 he was the secretary of state for india he was the secretary for state of india and he lived in britain only he okay he was one of the chief leaders of the reform of 1909 he only reformed or he only brought the council act of 1909 with the help of lord minto okay at that time lord minto was the viceroy of india after lord curzon okay after lord curzon lord minto became the viceroy of india okay so with the help of morley okay secretary of state and this viceroy they only introduced the council act of 1909 and on their name only the council act was known as morley minto reform okay let us see what were the reformations that they have brought okay abhi tak humne padha tha what we have learned in the council act of 1890 or oh, 92 that in central legislature the number of members should be 10 to 16 now that number was increased and it became from 16 to 60 that means now additional members can be 16 to 60 okay the number of central legislature has increased the number of members of the provincial legislatures was also increased that means provincial now in the provinces also numbers of members have increased it was fixed as 50 in the provinces of bengal madras and bombay that means in major provinces the number of provincial members increased to 50 okay and in the rest of the province it was 30 that means in the presidency towns the number of provincial members should be 50 and in the other towns it should be 30 so this was only the reformation which was done with the introduction of the indian council act okay they also gave the this act is famous because this act gave right to the to the muslims the right of separate electorate was given to the muslim in in india now elections have started on the basis of religion okay they have provided religion as the representative of the election at the center official members were to form the majority but in provinces non official members would be in majority okay um, that means uh, they have also made some changes in the number of official and non official members so basically these three points are very important first of all the number of central legislatures members change to 16 okay 16 to 60 and provincial also 50 to 30 okay they have also introduced separate electorate for muslims okay this is the most important thing that introduced in the morley minto reform that is separate electorate was given to the muslims let us learn about what is separate electorate now it was told that suppose that there is one province okay there is one province and in that province the population of that place is of 10 people okay among those 10 people okay in those 10 people the muslims are in majority suppose that there are four muslims and other people belongs to different religion okay now why what muslims demanded that in the provinces where the muslim majority or muslims are in majority in those provinces seats are only reserved for the muslims that means us particular place pe muslims hi election mein khade bhi honge aur muslims ko hi right milna chahiye vote dene ka okay this is only the separate electorate the places where muslims are in majority in those places only muslim can contest for the election that that means he muslims members can only be stand as representatives 
and only muslims will should get the right to vote only muslims should get the right to vote they should not get the right to vote this was only the separate electorate that means after the introduction of the morley minto reform now the provinces in india in which the muslim number population is more in those provinces muslims are only allowed to form the government to form or to become the member of legislature okay so this is only the concept of separate electorate okay so this only was demanded by the muslims at with the introduction of morley minto reform this was listened by the britishers britishers fulfilled this demand okay what was the congress reaction on the formation of muslim league congress was divided into two fractions we have already seen in the moderate and in the extremist the moderate agreed with the reforms moderate was okay with the reforms okay saying that it has saved the country from anarchy and chaos since indians and muslim muslims and hindus will start it fighting it among themselves so that is why moderates ne kaha it is good that britishers have introduced separate electorate for the muslims to give them also means importance okay so acha hua ye introduce kiya gaya nahi to ye dono aapas mein hi ladte on the other hand extremists were not in favor of these reforms extremists were not in favor of this okay now muslim league what was the reaction of muslim league on the contrary the all india muslim league welcomed the council act of 1909 they welcomed the morley minto reform the league passed a resolution which offered cooperation with the government for the success of the reform okay they said that they will help the government if they will introduce the separate electorate and that is why the muslims started helping the britishers okay let us move further rise of revolutionaries in the indian national movement now students revolutionaries we have learned about the two groups okay the one was extremist and the other was moderate we have learned about their methods okay moderates were medium okay they adopted constitutional methods okay and we have learned about extremists they were not that radical okay they choose the medium path okay they usually do strike and boycott now we will learn about this thing that after the partition of bengal india saw the rise of revolutionaries also revolutionaries those the youngsters the young community the young people those who have having the fire to independent their nation from the britishers okay so this was the time of the revolutionary okay revolution means kya hota hai what who are the revolutionaries so revolutionary is a person okay who start or support action who started who tried to change the government of a country by violent methods extremists and moderates both of them have adopted the non violent method okay they do not adopted violent method but this group the revolutionaries have adopted the violent method okay they started using weapons bombs they started killing britishers okay for the purpose of independence to okay to free their country from the control of the britishers that means the revolutionaries were the people those who have started using force okay power okay to throw out the britishers from india let us learn about them a more what was the situation what happened in 1905 we have seen that britishers were not listening to the moderate okay they were not listening to the moderate okay moderates were keep on doing prayers persuasions public meetings they started writing articles but after that also britishers partition bengal okay next thing we have seen that extremists have started the swadeshi and boycott movement okay but when they have started swadeshi and boycott movement since extremists were less in number britishers started torturing them okay they started torturing them they started putting them in jail okay they tortured the extremist leader to this much that some of them have left the politics okay some of them were kept into jail okay for many years okay so that is why what happened exactly ki moderates britishers were not listening to the moderates and extremist movement was stopped okay just because the leaders were either tortured or either put in jail by the britishers now at the time the youth of india okay those who were having the feeling of nationalism in themselves they started the movement they became the part of the movement at the time when moderates and extremists were total failure okay so this time only the rise of revolutionaries was saw, seen in india and they have tried to independent india okay we have seen see that what were the several movements that was done by them so reasons behind the revolutionary activities why the revolutionary activities started in india 
so nationalism among youth the youth of india the young people of india the the children those who belong from 18 to 20 years of age okay they came into the national movement they became the part of the national movement and they filled with the feeling of nationalism they wanted to free their country from the britishers failure of moderate and extremist methods as i have explained you repression of government left no peaceful options for the protest okay since britishers those who were boycotting or striking these people have already saw okay these revolutionaries have already saw that what the britishers have done with the leaders okay those who were doing the peaceful protest either they were not listening or those who were doing the strike or boycott they have started putting them into jail or torturing them okay so they have shown that repression of government left no peaceful methods or options for the protest they are not listening us we have to adopt new things okay youth were inspired from irish and russian nationalism they were inspired from the irish and russian people okay those who were fighting for the freedom of their country okay let us move further methods of revolutionary what they used to do first of all so they had no faith in the constitutional agitation they thought that we do not want any reformation we are not going to please britishers we are not going to request to the britishers okay they followed one thing they started assassinating the british officials they started assassinating means they started killing they started using weapons they started culting bombs okay on the people or on the british officials so to to develop terror in the britishers okay to develop terror in the britishers okay they encourage people to express expel the british by force they said that britishers are not going to go that easily we have to throw them from india with force we have to use force now okay use of violent methods they adopted violent methods such as they started adopting or using weapons and they started culting bombs also they started throwing bombs on the british officials okay so that to increase terror among themselves now some of the famous revolutionaries were vd savarkar is there okay vd savarkar is there bika ji kama is there okay sardar ajit singh is there okay so like that only lala hardial is there so all these are the famous revolutionaries of india that took part or that gave birth to several revolutionary activities in india okay one of the famous activity i will explain you now listen to me they usually worked in the individual manner okay they were the revolutionaries they were having secret societies where they used to plan okay that what they are going to do they were having secret societies that work for the revolutionaries that they were having industries that used to manufacture weapons or bombs sab chupa ke karte the ye taki britishers ko pata hi na chale theek hai so they were having secret societies for that one is abhinav bharat society famous mitra mela is also there in your book mitra mela is not given okay mitra mela is also one of the famous secret society abhinav bharat society is there and anu shilan samiti is there ye sab secret societies thi jo revolutionaries jahan pe plan kiya karte the kisko marenge weapons bombs they used to collect all those things okay so abhinav bharat society was also known as young india society was founded by vinayak damodar savarkar vinayak damodar savarkar aur unke bhai ganesh damodar savarkar okay they formed the secret secret society or secret group organization in 1904 at maharashtra okay this organization was formed in maharashtra okay like that only one more famous secret society was of the revolutionaries was there that is known as anushilan samiti it was established in calcutta by barindra kumar ghosh and jatindra banerji and pramod mitra okay two three revolutionaries combined and they form anushilan samiti there all these samitis work okay the uh, revolutionaries were the part of these samitis and they plan that what they are going to do next to terror the britishers next is one event i want to explain you one event i will explain about the revolutionaries revolutionary activities in 1908 the two famous revolutionaries the khudiram bose and prakulla chaki he is khudiram bose he was just 18 years old okay and he is Khud, um, chaki prakulla chaki okay they these are the two famous revolutionaries in 1908 they targeted okay they target a british officer they planned that they will throw a bomb okay in the carriage of that british officer in the carriage means jisme wo travel karte hain wo gaadi jisme wo travel karte the they planned that they will throw the bomb or bomb or cult the bomb on the carriage of the british officer named as douglas kingford okay douglas kingford he was the chief magistrate of bengal okay they planned that they will throw the bomb on his carriage okay but they threw bomb also at the carriage believed to be occupied by kingford they believe that in the carriage kingford is sitting and they just throw the bomb bomb on that carriage what happened unfortunately when they threw the bomb on the carriage the carriage contained two british ladies and not kingford 
in that carriage kingsford was not sitting okay unfortunately there were two ladies that were died with that bomb okay so after that only after this incident only prafulla chaki okay committed suicide prafulla chaki ultimately committed suicide and khudiram bose was caught by the britishers khudiram bose ko britishers ne pakad liya tha and they hanged to death by the britishers and he hanged them khudiram bose to death so this was a major event okay like that only there are many cases that took place during that time also they tried to kill the governor of bengal in 1907 so all these are the famous activities that were started by the revolutionary they used to uh, inculcate the feeling of terror in the britishers okay so these are the revolutionaries and these are the revolutionaries activities that were started by the revolutionary these revolutionaries organization was also settled outside india that means in the foreign countries also like in canada united states and japan singapore okay in all these countries also these revolutionaries were having their organization they used to this plan thing from living there that how they could independent their nations from the britishers okay among these parties only there is one famous party known as gadar party gadar party was formed in the year 1915 okay sorry 1913 and it fought in 1915 okay gadar party what is the meaning of gadar gadar means revolt okay what is the meaning of gadar the meaning of gadar is revolt since okay why this revolt started since this organization or this party was started by the sikh community okay by the sikh community sikh traveled from india to canada okay they went to canada and in canada they faced racial discrimination they faced racial discrimination and against that they started feeling or developing this feeling that they are facing racial discrimination in canada just because their country is under the rule of britain just because india is under the rule of britain so that is why they decided to form a party that works for the freedom of india and by that time only they started a party named as gadar party so gadar party was a revolutionary party okay this party gadar means hota revolt this party was started by punjabi sikh okay punjabi community ne banayi thi and who were the member of this party the member were ex soldier of british army peasants of india jo punjabi peasants the ya ex soldiers the british army ke okay they were the member of this party and they have only formed this party okay okay and this party was formed in usa from canada they went to usa kyunki canada se unko bhaga diya gaya tha okay wahan se wo kahan gaye usa gaye and usa only they formed their gadar party okay real name of this one more name is there it is known as hindi association of pacific coast other name of gadar party is hindi association of pacific coast okay the headquarter of gadar party was in california san francisco what was the aim procure arm to collect more and more arm to revolt against the racial discrimination and to free their country from the britishers all these were the objectives or aims of the gadar party okay why this gadar party was formed dekho hua kya tha there is one incident took place that is komagata maru incident komagata maru was the name of a ship ye ek ship ka naam tha that ship was travelling from india to canada ye ship india se canada ja rahi thi that only i was explaining you in this ship total 370 passengers were there okay 370 passengers the when the ship reached the canada ओके और इस शिप में 370 पैसेंजर्स में पीजेंट्स थे इंडियन पीजेंट्स थे और एक्स सोल्जर्स थे दो जो वर गोइंग टू टू कैनेडा फॉर लिविंग मोर कंफर्टेबल लाइफ ओके कैनेडा रिफ्यूज टू कम इन ऑर्डर टू ब्रिटिशर्स कैनेडा ने कहा कि सिख कम्युनिटीज और दीज पैसेंजर्स कैन नॉट कम टू कैनेडा उसने उन्हें वापस कर दिया दैट पूरी शिप वापस आ गई दैट शिप रीच टू कैलकटा ओके कैलकटा पहुंची एंड देयर ओनली देर वॉज अ स्ट्रॉन्ग फाइट बिटवीन द पुलिस बिटवीन द ब्रिटिश पुलिस एंड बिटवीन द पब्लिक एंड इन दैट फाइट ट्वेंटी टू पीपल वर किड सो दिस वॉज द मेजर इवेंट दैट टेक इन प्लेस एंड आफ्टर दैट ओनली द गदर पार्टी वॉज फॉर्म ओके इंपॉर्टेंट लीडर्स ऑफ दिस पार्टी वॉज सोहन सिंह बखरा इज क्रेडिटेड फॉर फॉर्मिंग दिस पार्टी रिमेंबर द नेम ओके हु इज द लीडर और द प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ दिस पार्टी वॉज सोहन सिंह बखरा ओके एंड इट्स इट्स वाइस प्रेसिडेंट इज केसर सिंह and lala hardyal was the co-founder okay so this is all about the gadar party and the movement that party started in india this party also believed in the freedom of india they were also revolutionary in nature and this party was started by the punjabi sikhs the ex soldiers and the peasants of india so until here i have explained you the rise of revolutionaries also i have explained you one of the major event okay like that several event took place okay later on we have learned about this thing 
okay so up to this part i have explained you the major events that took place till the formation of the gadar party and the rise of revolutionary in the next part we will cover cover more topic that is home rule league in india lucknow pact we will learn about we will start the gandhian era also we will welcome mahatma gandhi in india okay and he will start the mass movement in india so stay connected to the videos okay watch the full video properly listen it carefully read your book okay and ask for queries in the zoom classes please watch the video students thank you